Hello friends, welcome to EPG Partshala. I am Atika Tajdar from Department of Geography, Jamia Millia Islamia. Today, we will discuss about Wildlife Protection Act 1972. The learning objectives are to understand the impression of different environmental laws, to confer familiar understanding about Wildlife Protection Act 1972 and its necessity, to discuss salient feature of Wildlife Protection Act 1972, to comprehend amendment in the Wildlife Protection Act 1972 and to examine drawbacks and criticism of the Wildlife Protection Act. India is the first country in the world to have made provision for the protection and conservation of environment in its constitution. On 5th June 1972, environment was first discussed as an item of international agenda in the UN Conference of Human Environment in Stockholm and Thereafter, 5th June is celebrated all over the world as World Environment Day. Sweden was the first country to suggest United Nations Economic and Social Council the idea of having a UN conference to focus on human interaction with the environment. General Assembly Resolution 2398 in 1969 decided to convene a conference in 1972 and mandated a set of reports from the UN Secretary General suggesting that the conference focus on stimulating and providing guidelines for action by national government and international organization facing environmental issues. Soon after the Stockholm conference, our country took substantive legislative steps for environmental protection. India is endowed with the immense variety of natural resources in its rich animal and plant heritage. Wildlife is one of our basic and natural resources that satisfies the need of our wants of civilization. Therefore, these resources must be conserved, preserved and protected for the existence of mankind. Now, let us see the chronological development of wildlife protection in India in different periods. Wildlife Protection Act 1972 the post-independence era witnessed a lot of changes in the policies and attitudes of the government with respect to environmental protection. There were many intact enactment to protect the forest. There were many enactment to protect the forest, environment, water, air, and biodiversity. All these acts are directly or indirectly give provision to protection of the wildlife. But let us specifically emphasize on wildlife protection, since our topic of discussion is wildlife protection. The Indian constitution gave ample provision to protect the wildlife in its territory. Though there are many implied provision on wildlife protection in the constitution like article 21, union, state and concurrent list, the main article which specifically protect the wildlife are article 48A and article 51A and G. Article 48A says that the state shall endeavor to protect and improve the environment and to safeguard the forest and wildlife of the country. Article 51A G imposes fundamental duty on the every citizen of India to protect and improve the environment and have compassion for living creatures. The Wildlife Protection Act 1972 is an act of the Parliament of India enacted for protection of the plant and animal species which provide Captive breeding program for endangered species like loin, tiger, crocodile, and brown antled deer were stated under this act. It extended to the whole of India except the state of Jammu and Kashmir, which has its own wildlife act. Protection to listed species of flora and fauna and establishes a network of ecologically important protected areas. Power to the central and state government to declare a, any area a wildlife sanctuary, national park or closed area. Ban on carrying out any industrial activity inside these protected areas. It provides for authorities to administer and implement the act, regulate the hunting of wildlife animals. It provides for authorities to administer and implement the act, regulate the hunting of wild animals, protect specified plants sanctuaries, national parks and closed areas, restrict trade and commerce in wild animal or animal articles and miscellaneous matters. The act prohibits hunting of animal except with permission of authorized officer when an animal has become dangerous to human life or property 
or as disabled or diseased as to be beyond recovery. The act consists of 60 section and 6 schedules divided into 8 chapters. Out of 6 schedules which gives varying degree of protection, schedule 1 and part 2 of schedule 2 provide absolute protection and offenses under these prescribe the highest penalties. The penalties for schedule 3rd and schedule 4th are less and these animals are protected. Schedule 5th include the animal which may be hunted like common crows, fruit bats, mice and rats only. Schedule 6 contain the plant which are prohibited from cultivation and planting some plants for example are blue vanda, kut, pitcher plant and red vanda. The Wildlife Protection Act 1972 instructs that no wild mammal, bird, amphibian, reptile, fish, crustacean, insects or colenterates listed in four schedule of the Wildlife Protection Act can be hunted either within or outside protected areas. On conviction, the penalty of hunting is imprisonment for a period ranging for a maximum of three to maximum of seven years with fines not less than 10,000 rupees. Community reserves and conservation reserves are two new categories of protected area that have been included under the Wildlife Protection Act. These two categories provide a greater role for local communities, stakeholders and civil society as well as the opportunity to protect many areas of conservation value that cannot be designed under strict categories such as wildlife sanctuaries or national parks. The statute prohibits the destruction or diversion of wildlife and its habitat by any method unless it is for improvement or better management and this is decided by the state government in constitution with the national and state boards of wildlife. Necessity of Wildlife Protection Act The rapid decline of India's wild animal and birds, one of the richest and most varied wildlife resources of the country has been a cause of great concern. Some wild animal and birds have already become extinct in this country and the other in the danger of being so. Areas which were once teeming with wildlife have become devoid of it and even in sanctuaries and national parks the protection afforded to wildlife needs to be improved. The Wild Birds and Animal Protection Act 1935 has become completely outdated. These existing laws not only have become outdated but also provide punishments which are not commensurate with the offense and financial benefit that occur from poaching and trade in wildlife produce. Further, such laws mainly relate to control of hunting and do not emphasize the other factor which are also the prime reason for the decline of India's wildlife namely taxidermy and trade in wildlife and products therefrom. Mm -hmm. Conservation of wildlife is ignored in the development era, but we should not forget that environment and development go hand in hand. It is the duty of government and individual to be responsible towards environment and conserve wildlife. Today, efforts are being made towards wildlife conservation in India to preserve this natural wealth. Numerous wildlife conservation projects have been undertaken in India, both at the government as well as the individual level, to protect the rich wildlife of the subcontinent. Now let us discuss the salient feature of Wildlife Protection Act 1972. The act contains 66 sections divided into 7 chapters and 6 schedules. Chapter 1 contains short title and definition. Chapter 2 deal with authorities under the act. Chapter 3 deal with the protection of specified plants. Chapter 4 provide for declaration of sanctuaries, national park and closed areas. Chapter 5 Chapter 4A deal with Central Zoo Authority and recognition of zoos. Chapter 5th deal with the trade or commerce in wild animals, animal article and trophies. Chapter 5A deal with prohibition of trade and commerce in trophies, animal article etc. Chapter 6 relate to prevention and detection of offenses and finally Chapter 7 contain miscellaneous provision. The Wildlife Protection Act 1972 which we read today is a product of process which started long ago in 1887 for the protection of a few wild birds and after addition of wild elements in 1912 and specified plants in 1991. It covered almost all the wildlife resources which need protection and management. A few salient feature of the uh, act a few salient features of the act are as follows. 
the act provides for setting up of national park, wildlife sanctuaries, etc., with provision of providing protection to some endangered plants. It provides for the appointment of wildlife advisory board, protection wildlife warden, their power and duties, etc., provide guidelines for farming policies and advice provide guidelines for framing policies and advising central and state government on promotion of wildlife conservation and controlling poaching and illegal trade of wildlife and its products, making recommendations for setting up and managing national parks, sanctuaries and other protected areas and suggesting measures for the improvement of wildlife conservation. Under the Act, comprehensive listing of endangered wildlife species was done for the first time and prohibition of hunting of the endangered species was mentioned. The rating of the Schedule 1 to 5th is accordance with the risk of survival of the wildlife. Animals included Schedule R provide for the total protection from hunting and the trade and commerce related to such animals are strictly regulated. The Schedule 6 has been added to include the specified plant species to be protected by the Wildlife Amendment Act of 1991. An expert committee constituted by the Indian Board of Wildlife considers amendment to the Act as and when necessary. The, Wild Act of the Wildlife Act of 1972 as amended in 1982, 1986, 1991 and 1993 has seven chapter, 66 sections and six schedules. The act with its various amendments provide the necessary tool to prevent damage to the wildlife. With the amendment of the act in 1991, powers of the state government has been withdrawn almost totally. Now the state government are not empowered to declare any wild animal as vermin. Further, by addition of provision, Immunization of livestock within a radius of 5 km from a national. The Act imposes a ban on the trade or commerce in scheduled animal and it provides for legal power to officers and punishment to offenders. Five kind of protected areas can be notified in the Act and these are as follows. Sanctuaries, National Parks, Conservation Reserve, Community Reserve and Tiger Reserve. Key point of the Wildlife Protection Act 1972. Wildlife may include any animal, bees, butterflies, crustaceans, fish and moths, and aquatic or land vegetation which form part of any habitat. Wild animal would mean any animal found wild in nature and include any animal specified in Schedule 1st, Schedule 2nd, 3rd, 4th or 5th wherever found. Habitat would include land water or vegetation which is the natural home of any wild animal. Hunting would include the capturing, killing, poisoning, snaring and trapping any wild animal and include an attempt to do so or even driving an animal for the purpose. Injuring or destroying or taking any part of the body of such animal or bird or reptile or even damaging their eggs or disturbing their nest would be also mean hunting. Trophy would include the whole or part of any captive wild animal other than vermin preserved by natural or artificial means and include rugs, skin and specimen of a rugs, skin and specimens of such animal mounted in whole or part by taxidermy. Antler, horn hair, feather, nail, tooth, musk, eggs and nest would also be called as trophies. Entry with weapons is also prohibited without previous entry with weapon is also prohibited without previous permission of wildlife warden. It is the duty of the wildlife warden to immunize against all communicable diseases, livestock within five km of the sanctuary. The state government may also, if it deems fit, that an area within or outside a sanctuary is by reason of ecological, flora, fauna, geomorphologic, natural or zoological association constitute it to be a national park by notification. Wild animals are basically the properties of the government. In case of any person has possession of such animal or article, he may report it to the nearest police officer within 48 hours or hand over such property to the officer in charge. Certificate of ownership may be granted by the chief wildlife warden in case of possession, which he may mark in a prescribed form for the purpose of identification. 
Amendment in Wildlife Protection Act 1972. In 1963, the World Conservation Union passed a resolution calling for an international convention on regulation on export, transit and import of rare or threatened wildlife species, their skin and trophies. Ten years later, 21 countries signed the Convention or International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Flora and Fauna. The main aim was to check on our exploitation through international trade. In 1972, the endangering of various species due to trade is a skin of lizards, monitors, snakes, etc., sold in millions along with those of the tiger, rhino horns, bear paws, and gallbladder, accelerated India to enact the Wildlife Act 1972. India joined sites in 1976 by ratification. However, the Wildlife Protection Act 1972 had some flaws and loopholes which were abused by unscrupulous traders. This led to an amendment in 1982. An amendment to the Act in 1982 introduced provision permitting the capture and transportation of wild animals for the scientific management of animal population. An amendment in the year 1991 resulted in the insertion of the special chapter dealing with the protection of a specified plant and the regulation of zoos. This also recognized the need of tribal and forest dweller and changes were introduced to advance their welfare. The near total prohibition on hunting was made more effective by the Amendment Act of 1991. Some of the salient features during these amendments were the verification and marking with identification of a stock of wildlife for licensed dealer was required. The tra transportation of wildlife and wildlife product require a permit from an authorized officer that the product had been legally acquired. Trade in ivory and its product were completely banned. Issues of firearm license with te within 10 km of a sanctuary without the concurrence of the wildlife warden was prohibited. Vehicles, arms, vessels and weapons used for the purpose of committing offences under the Act were to be seized. Commercial felling and exploitation of flora was banned. Individual and NGOs, individuals and NGOs were allowed to take instances of violation Individuals and NGOs were allowed to take instances of violations directly to courts. A central zoo authority was set up to ensure sound management of the zoos. While desperate changes have been made by the Wildlife Protection Amendment Act 2002, a new chapter has been incorporated as Chapter 6A to deal with the forfeiture of property derived from illegal hunting and trade. Further, this Amendment Act also introduced the concept of cooperative management through Conservation Reserve Management Committee and Community Reserve Committees. The 2006 amendment introduced a new chapter 4th B for establishment of the National Tiger Conservation Authority and notification of Tiger Reserve. Before this amendment, Tiger Reserve were not defined under the law but were merely administrative designation to enabling funding under Project Tiger. The Wildlife Crime Control Bureau WCCB was constituted wide the 2006 amendment to monitor and control the illegal trade in wildlife products. The Wildlife Protection Act provides for investigation and prosecution of offenses in a court of law by authorized officers of the forest department and police officers. The act underwent many amendments. The Wildlife Protection Amendment Bill 2013 seeks to ban the use of animal trap except under certain condition. Engage Gram Sabha and Gram Panchayat in management of protection areas and to grant hunting right to hunter-gatherer scheduled tribe of the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. The bill proposes that hunting in national park and sanctuaries or the alteration of their boundaries should be punished with 5 to 7 year in jail and fine of rupees 5 to 25 lakhs up to from 3 to 7 years in jail and rupees 10,000 fine in the current law. The punishment would be 7 year in prison and rupees 30 lakh fine for repeat offenders up from 3 to 7 years of imprisonment up 
to 3 to 7 year of imprisonment and rupees 25,000 fine now. The amendment proposed a stricter deterrence for crime related to sale, purchase and transfer of animal, their parts or product listed in various schedules. With this introduction now, let us discuss the Wildlife Protection Act 1972 in a detailed way. Drawback and Criticism of Wildlife Protection Act We have seen that there are number of important environmental laws in the form of act for safeguarding our environmental quality. But in spite of these act, we find that we are not able to achieve the target of bringing 33% of our land cover under forest. Still, we are losing our wildlife. The river have been turned into open sewers in many places and the air in our big cities is badly polluted. The status of environment shows that there are drawback in environmental legislation and problem in their effective implementation. Let us examine some of the important issues related to our Act of 1972. Some of the major drawback of the Act include mild penalty to offenders, illegal wildlife trade in Jammu and Kashmir, personal ownership, personal ownership certificate for animal article like tiger and leopard skins, no coverage of foreign endangered wildlife, pitiable condition of wildlife in mobile zoos, little emphasis on protection of plant genetic resources, the inadequacy of border control mechanism to check wildlife trafficking has also provided impetus to poachers to use the Indo-Chinese border to directly supply tiger part from the source country to the consumers in China. Earlier, trade in tiger part was legalized in China which led to the market being flooded with tiger product from both captive bred tiger as well as wild tigers. Sites Resolution Conference this resolution was adopted by consensus after which the demand for tiger product from China has been substantially reduced. If China legalized tiger trade again, it will bear significant responsibility for loss of wild tiger due to poaching. With regard to the rampant cross-border trade in wildlife, the Wildlife Protection Act has yet another glaring loophole. The extent of enforcement of the Wildlife Protection Act doesn't include Jammu and Kashmir. Jammu and Kashmir is host to a diverse range of endemic species, however these are not covered by the state act. The Wildlife Protection Act also failed to comprehensively cover practices that are for scientific purposes such as venom extraction from snakes. Most, inti most institutions produce venom by extracting it repeatedly from each snake until the animal dies thereby depleting the wild population of these venomous snakes, some of which are endangered. The Wildlife Protection Act is sale the Wildlife Protection Act is silent on the procedure of ethical capture, handling and release of these snakes. Although an amendment in 1982 has allowed for collection of a snake for extraction of venom for manufacture of anti venom and life saving drugs under section twelve D. A commonly exploited loophole in the Wildlife Protection Act is the provision for self-defense, which is often abused and can easily to be claimed whilst hunting wildlife. Section 11, two, Section 11 Part 2 of the Wildlife Protection Act states that the killing or wounding in good faith of any wild animal in defense of oneself or any other person shall not be an offense. This allows many forest dwellers who hunt animal with rudimentary weapon to merely claim self-defense when caught and get away with it, simply because the burden of proof does not lie on them to prove that they were not hunting the animal. Thus, the effort of vigilant forest guard and often defeated in court when the plea of self-defense is sustained simply because of the obvious lack of insurmountable evidence that they were hunting the animal. The incentive of killing an animal need to be completely eliminated in the cases of killing wildlife for self-defense so that the case where animals are hunted and self-defense is claimed can be curbed. Thank you.